It does. But it does set a clear direction and a starting point from which we can go further. Please support this motion to tackle poverty in our country, to start by putting £5 billion into supporting people who need it, and to put £50 billion as a start into making our country more equal. Survey number 33, 
And that figure has not changed since 1983. So who is the party of this 60%? I say the Liberal Democrats are, and must continue to be, and must tell people that we are. And this motion lets us do that. Let me contrast the work of one of our MPs, Ed Davies. He spent his time, or some of his time in government, fighting for working people to have skilled jobs. And he worked with Siemens and got them into Hull, providing wind turbine manufacturing and assembly plants. So who is the party of the working class? I would argue strongly that it certainly is not Labour. Labour who pretend to be the party of the working class. I'll give you an example. In Harringay, I am a councillor. I'm an opposition spokesperson for housing and regeneration. Locally, we have a bit of an issue at the moment. We have a wonderful industrial estate, the Peacock Industrial Estate, and it is under threat. It's going to be removed, potentially, demolished. The people who own their properties, who have excellent jobs there, provide work for our community, skilled work, a specialist in auto transmission, a wood machinist who prepares wood products, wood product machine, with products, sorry, for furniture restorers. He's been there since 1948. It's a business in the family. These people supply over 250 jobs in the area, skilled jobs, they provide apprenticeships. And yet the council wants to demolish them, to move them on, because perhaps their jobs aren't pretty or clean. This is happening across London. We have a working class in London. We have a working class around the country. We have a duty to support it, to create opportunity, to make sure it has places to be. So I ask you, who is the party of the working class? Can we be the party of the working class? Can we take this to the people of this country, get them on our side, provide them with what they want, provide them with the jobs and the opportunity wherever they live, whether you want to work in manufacturing in London or whether you want to be a professional in the Outer Hebrides, you should have that opportunity, and this motion talks about investment, and it talks about giving that opportunity to people in every region, all over the UK. I urge you to support this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Martin Williamson, please stand by, and I now call Councillor Jessica Stiff from Watford, uh, who is a town councillor who wishes to speak for lines 105 and 106. Is Councillor Jessica Stiff? It doesn't look like it. All right, well, with my sincere apologies for the lack of notice, I'm going to invite uh, Councillor Matthew Winnington from Portsmouth uh, to come forward. Uh, Matthew, are you here? Uh, yes. Splendid. Uh, thank you. Easy to my ears. Uh, I wonder if you wouldn't mind then coming forward, please, and making your speech. Uh, you wish to speak for the motion as a whole, uh, and I'm going to invite James Sandback from East Suffolk to stand by. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, conference. Um, my, I, I, I'm, I really like to support this motion. Uh, this motion is fantastic. Um, it covers a lot of issues, but I want to particularly talk about um, the benefits issues. Uh, until two weeks ago, I was uh, working as a sport worker for a local charity in Portsmouth, um, and I do drop-ins at. I did drop-ins at um, food banks, and. It's, my work there was giving people advice. The five week wait for universal credit is absolutely devastating for people. It is the biggest reason why people use food banks. I would say about 60% of all the people who use food banks come because they have to wait. They don't necessarily have a need to come after that time, but what it does is it puts them behind with bills, it puts them behind with their rent, and it puts them at risk of eviction. The charity I work for also runs the temporary accommodation service. What I work for also runs a temporary accommodation for Portsmouth City Council. And so many of the people who use temporary accommodation do so because they've been evicted, because their landlords will not wait for the rent they have to wait for for five weeks. That is just unacceptable. So I'm grateful that the party is addressing this by going down from five weeks to five days for the wait for universal credit. But the benefits cap is also 
a disgrace. It is completely unnecessary. It has been exacerbated as well by George Osborne straight after the 2015 general election, as soon as the shackles were released on the Conservatives, using universal credit as a vehicle for cuts. That's what they did. That's what Conservatives do. They look for opportunities to cut public spending. They look for opportunities to do down the most vulnerable people in society because you know what? They don't really care about it. We do. We are liberals. We care about everyone. I'll leave you with just two things, problems. HIP and WCAs. Out of all of them, uh, out of all of the um, uh, ones that go to appeal, 71% of um, appeals are successful nationally. And in Portsmouth, in the Portsmouth area, 53 and 75%, 53 of ESA and 75% of appeals are successful. What does that say about the process? It is broken, it needs fixing. And I commend what this motion says about um, those, and I commend the motion as a whole. Please vote for the conference. Can I just go with this? We were very disillusioned at one stage. I think I talked to her about a year ago. I now call James Sandbach from East Sussex. I'm going to sit down and show you a scan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, conference. Uh, I only put a speaking card into this debate because uh, I really proposed a, an amendment which got rejected by the FCC. Uh, and the FCC came back and said, well, why don't you put your uh, uh, point in the speech instead? Um, and my amendment was simply that we ought to put um, the, but the, we ought to put the Austin report, the, uh, the reports of the uh, UN Act of Extreme Poverty, uh, we ought to put that actually in the text of the motion. Uh, it is in the paper, it's the policy paper to find the motion, but it doesn't actually refer to it in the motion itself. Uh, and I think that's a missed opportunity because we need to be clear that our approach to, to poverty, our approach to uh, touching poverty, um, should be rights-based. Now, somebody said that no rights should be ethical. Uh, I don't think so. I think actually rights give us a basis uh, of a values-based approach to policy making uh, on important social policy areas. Um, so, as Tim Farron said, I mean, the Austin report was absolutely shocking. Um, and the Austin report highlighted that only we have you know, almost one, that by 2000 and, and uh, I think better, by, that 40% uh, of children are predicted to be living in poverty by 2021. We already have one fifth of the population already living in poverty. Um, and these are really, really shocking statistics. Um, but the importance of grounding our, our, our approach in the, in the, in the, in the human rights-based approach uh, is that we are a signatory to the International Covenant on, um, on, uh, on social and economic rights. Um, but we've never actually put any, any machinery to monitor that in the UK, um, other than reporting very occasionally to the UN on it. Um, and every time the UN has come to this country, they have found that our performance in the country is sadly, sadly lacking. Um, one thing we ought to also put into our policy um, is that we want to be we ought to be actually implementing the Section 1 of the Equality Act, which again is on the statute books, uh, which is a duty for all public authorities to take socio-economic disadvantage into account when they develop strategies for public services and policy. Uh, it's on the statute book, but it's never been implemented, and we should make sure that section of the law gets implemented as well. But this is an excellent policy, an excellent paper, an excellent motion. Please support it. Thank you. spoken against Amendment 1 or Amendment 2, so I'm not going to take summations on that. So with Paul Noblet and from Morgan Forest, please stand by to submit on the same motion. And our last speaker in the debate itself is going to be Jill Riley from North Edinburgh and Leith, who wishes to speak for the motion as a whole. Good afternoon, Conference. Um, I'm Since the financial crash, there have been many fly-in-the-wall documentaries depicting life and benefits many showing families have been supported by the state for generations, apparently abusing the system and not even trying to get work. But at the same time, there's been a marked increase in food banks and a steady increase in homelessness. 
clearly something is adding up. If benefits are working, then why are people spiraling into a crisis of no food, and even worse, no home? Like a number of other speakers, I have recently spent some time volunteering at a food bank, sorting tin cans and dried food goods into food parcels. Whilst there, I also learned more about the services they offer. The Northwest Edinburgh Food Bank is focused on helping people in emergency crisis situations through referral from support agencies such as Citizens Advice and Health Visitors. This crisis focus means each family can have up to a maximum of three food parcels a year. Each parcel will last three days. It is clearly not a tenable solution to the problem of having no food on the table. So how do people get into these crisis situations? Examples provided at the food bank include a late benefit payment, which meant the money was left over for food after paying to the uh, prescription. A self-employed person having to suddenly care for a sick relative. Or a person on zero hours contract finding themselves with too small a paying packet. You can see how any of these could spiral into a bigger crisis if they continued without support. The food bank provides only a very short ter term relief. Without improvement, you can see how the situation could relatively quickly lead to homelessness and mental health issues. Surely this is exactly what the benefit system was created to prevent, and instead catch people at these key moments and stop the spiral. I believe this motion will ensure the benefit system works more effectively. There are many well thought out proposals in the ambitious plan highlighted in the post policy that would directly help the people I've mentioned when they need, they need it most, such as Reducing the wait time for the first benefit payment from five weeks to five days and creating positive incentives rather than applying sanctions. Ensuring those on zero hours contracts receive a higher level of minimum wage to compensate them for the uncertainty of fluctuating hours of work. And making sure that the system supports self-employed people by extending the minimum income floor exemption period and so ensuring they aren't penalised for fluctuating incomes. The policy states it would be a key target for Liberal Democrats to create the circumstance in which food banks were no longer required. Conference, if food banks are no longer required, then we will have prevented the short-term crisis. We will have supported people when they needed it most. We will stop the downward spiral. Please support this motion. in favour of the motion and the excellent amendments that go with it than we've had, had against it, but actually I think even those points where members have had some concerns I think are incredibly valid and perhaps set out to Jeremy Hargreaves was saying uh, uh, part of that route map and how we can go further uh, in the future. Um, I should start by, by thanking fellow members of the working group, some of whom you've heard from already uh, this afternoon. We've managed to bring together a range of people, be they economists, or robotics professionals, uh, communications specialists, people with lived experience of claiming universal credit, which is really important because these policies conference have to respond to real people out there outside of this hall and out there across this country. Conference, um, as a first time speaker and a first time working group chair, I should also say a big thank you to the staff team at Great George Street. Uh, particularly our Deputy Head of Policy, uh, Jonathan Everett, who has been a uh, fantastic resource and source of analysis for the working group over the past 12 months. Conference and selection presents a huge opportunity for this party, and these proposals give us the ability to connect with people across the country who find themselves politically homeless 
but share our values and want practical solutions to heal a divided nation. As we heard from Paula Ferguson, from James Humbach, and indeed from Tim Farron at the beginning of this debate, um, simply the situation we are now in in this country is not good enough. Britain in the 21st century should not have 30% of its children living in poverty. We should not have... We must not have in future 4 million people being driven to use food banks. We have a massive economic inequality between our nations and our regions, and the supply of truly affordable housing in this country is a testament to the Conservatives' preference for big developers over those who find themselves homeless. So, Conference, how do we go about ensuring a fairer share for all? Well, first, we need to make sure that everyone has access to a decent income, whether it is through employment or whether it is through the benefit system. In some cases, such as zero-hour contracts, that means increasing minimum wage rates by 20% in periods of high demand, such as in the run-up to Christmas. The conference, I hope that will also make companies think that if someone is doing a job, they should have contracts, they should have rights, and they should have certainty of the hours and the income they will get for that work. Conference, we also need to make massive changes as we've heard to the benefit system. Universal credit is not perfect, as Tim said in uh, moving the motion. It is a good idea in principle, but the Conservatives have gone about systematically sabotaging it. Those changes to the benefit system must start, however, not just with technical changes, but also by throwing out the current hostile environment that confronts so many vulnerable people and putting into place a culture which understands that people do not choose to be reliant on benefits, that believes claimants are acting in good faith, and that respects people for who they are and what they aspire to do. We also need to understand that a benefit system designed for recipients of a monthly salary and not a weekly wage is doomed to fail. That is not the reality for many, many people in this country. Which is why, we've already heard, this motion proposes no longer forcing people to wait five weeks for their benefits. Under the Liberal Democrats, benefit claims will be processed and paid not in five weeks, but in five days. It would mean that no longer would people have to be reliant on loan sharks. It means they would no longer have to be dependent on food banks. Put simply, conference, the Liberal Democrats would put dignity and compassion at the heart of the benefits system. Now, as we've already heard, conference, the Conservatives took £3 billion out of the benefit system in 2015 as soon as we were not there to stop them. We, in contrast, would put £5 billion a year back in as part of a £10 billion package that this motion and paper outlined. Now, as Jeremy Hargreaves mentioned, we of course can go further, but equally, at a point where we may find ourselves in government in just a few months' time, we also need to be responsible. And there are many things that this conference wants to see us do to support vulnerable people. And this is a balanced proposition to make sure the sums add up. Conference to tackle homelessness, we would go about uh, unfreezing the local How allow housing allowance to close the gap between uh, rents and uh, uh, local property prices. Um, there are many other things, I think, uh, Chair, as, uh, uh, as has been outlined by various speakers during the debate, including uh, Dawn Barnes about labour and, and gentrification in Haringey, and about uh, a Conservative attitude and what's been found in Portsmouth that Matthew Winnington so uh, well outlined. Um, however, conference, I hope that people will think that this motion does go far enough, because conference, this country does deserve better. People deserve a benefit system that works for them. Our communities deserve properly funded public services that are universally, universally accessible. And everyone deserves a fairer share of this country's economic prosperity, regardless of where they live. Conference, I urge you to vote for this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much.
apologise for all those people I wasn't able to call in the debate. We had a huge number of cards, but I'm really grateful to all of the speakers for their fantastic contributions. You will get what the balance of cards was in that debate by the balance of speakers uh, that I called. Uh, if I'm going to count your vote, you need to be sitting below the brown barrier, please, and seated in the auditorium. I can't count the votes of those that are standing up. We're going to take a series of three votes now. So if you turn to page seven of uh, Conference Daily, you'll see the two uh, members who are going to vote on first. Could I please uh, see when you vote your uh, passes held high with the word voting towards me? We're going to start with Amendment 1. Can I see all those in favour of Amendment 1, please? Can I see all those against? Amendment 1 is clearly passed. Can I see all those in favour of Amendment 2? Thank you. All those against? Amendment 2 is clearly passed. And now turning to the motion as a whole, can I see all those in favour of the motion as a whole, F10? Thank you. Can I see all those against? F10 is very clearly passed. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> That was F10, a fair share for all. And I tell you what, that is the kind of things I really like. One of the things I really like to add as they finish that is the issue about homelessness. And the issue about homelessness is really important in my heart because one of the reasons why people go homeless is because they don't have an address. And I think that uh, because people don't have an address, we need to be looking into the matters of why people don't have an address. If people don't have an address, they cannot even claim benefit. So that is something that we also need to push forward and look into solutions about how many of those rough sleepers are on the streets. And many of them cannot even claim benefits because they have not found anywhere to stay. Many, many thanks. Talking live here at Bournemouth is um, Juliet Macapilla. And thanks for watching. Thank you so much to everyone who's um, joined in. I can see all of you all the way from Kenya all the way from Nigeria, all the way from London, all the way from other parts of the country. And if you haven't joined in any political party, why not join us as well? And also join a political party that you really like. Um, until then, it is absolutely wonderful. Be part, shape the country, and enjoy politics in the United Kingdom. Here, we've got a great time. The weather is beautiful. And I tell you what, it's absolutely amazing to always be part of um, understanding how politics is, uh, policies are passed here in the United Kingdom. And you learn so much. So that is really, really important. Uh, also encouraging inclusivity and also encouraging many, many people to join politics from whichever country you are in. Make sure you're taking part into your local decision-making process and enjoy the politics across the whole world. Let's shape the world in to have love as well. Until then, it's a goodbye from me, Julius Makapi. Bye-bye. My name is Councilor Chamberlain, and my age is today, I'm Councilor Paul Kilsley on the stage, and Jack Payne on the This is item F11, and it's a motion to approve the Conference Daily Agenda.